Alright, we'll be in. Oi! Hey! Our Father, we're trying to have in Lord, as we come to you now in the name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father, we praise and we thank you for the day, Lord. And God, we just praise you this morning. God, I pray, Father, the power of the Holy Ghost to be upon me. Lord, as I preach your holy word. Lord, God, pray for the power of the Holy Ghost to be upon everyone here, Lord, to listen to the message, Father. And Lord, we praise you and thank you, Lord, for the work and healing you've done in my mum, Lord. Yeah. And God, I praise you, Lord. We pray for those that are sick, Father. Lift up your throne of grace, Lord. For those that could not be here, we also lift up the throne of grace, Lord. And God, we just praise you and we thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right, let's uh, turn to James chapter 5, verse 5. And, uh, <coughs> ooh, ooh. James chapter 5, verse 5. Now, the verse before, the week beforehand, because um, you know, it sort of goes in context, so we'll read that as well. Behold, the hire of the labourers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by your friend, by fraud crieth. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Sab and then verse 5 says, Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. <laughs> now, if we from the party, I'm actually going to title the message this morning is you will get to understand very soon the reason why I'm saying this but what or who will you allow into your heart now we'll get into this in a moment but the verse we're concentrating on here is James 5 5 you have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton you have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. <clears throat> so as always, we need to look at what the words mean because this is Bible study lesson time and we need to actually break apart the whole verse to understand what, what the book of James is trying to say here. <clears throat> so, <coughs> again, James 5.5, 5, what or who are you allowed to have? I'm going to, my title of message you'll see in a minute. Pleasure. The first word I want to look at is the word pleasure. The word pleasure means the gratification or of the senses or of the mind, agreeable sensations or emotions, the excitement, relish or happiness produced by enjoyment or the expectation of good opposed to pain. So there's pain and pleasure. Pleasure is something that makes you feel good makes you, let's just say it makes you feel good <laughs> in mind or in body. <clears throat> Some people have pleasure, like let's just say that, we could probably say that most women get a lot of pleasure when they eat chocolate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, as most people do get a lot of pleasure when they eat chocolate. Yeah, I love chocolate, but I can't eat I at the moment. I don't chocolate every now and again either. Oh. I get some pleasure out of that. Yeah, everyone gets pleasure <laughs> in chocolate, yeah, yeah. You get some good pleasure. <laughs> mm, that's right. You get lots of pleasure out of eating chocolate. Um, <clears throat> now, in the... Interesting, because we always like to, I like that the first mention of the word pleasure. We turn to Genesis chapter 18 and verse 12. <clears throat> this is the first mention of the word, of the word pleasure. Eighteen. Eighteen. Genesis chapter eighteen, and verse twelve. <clears throat> Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, "After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being my Lord." being old also that's talking about when they're about to have the about to have a child so when they're about to have the child you know so saying she laughed and she said shall I have pleasure <coughs> and Genesis um, 
1717, just before that, which is interesting, is that Abraham also says that Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old and shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? But if you look at this part here, he laughed in his heart. <coughs> he laughed in his heart. Revelations 4.11 says, That worthy O Lord to receive glory, honour and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So even God gets pleasure. Amen. So, so pleasure is, is good in the right sense, but there's also bad pleasure as well. So you have pleasure in spiritual things, or you can have pleasure like as in lustful things as well. The word wanton is the next word here we want to look at. I was like want on, but it's not really, it's actually separate. Its meaning is wandering from moral rectitude, licitiousness, dissolute, indulging in sensuality without restraint, as men grown wanton by prosperity, more probably deviating from the rules of chastity, lured, lustful, lasciviousness, libidinous. A lured person, a lascivious woman, man or woman. So what does rectitude mean in this part here? It's morality, righteousness of a principle of practice, upbites and mind exact. Basically, we could just say that it's been wanting you've been super lasciviousness lustful type of person mm -hmm. so really like super lustful lived in pleasure being wanting being super lustful or living in no chastity just lured sort of person sort of we said this <clears throat> and and basically it also means without restraint because the, the sinus, which is part of word meanings there, is using license, indulging freedom to excess, unrestrained by law or morality, loose, dissolute, or sinus man. So, I mean, it's the, because looking at the different words with wanton, remember we've got dissolute as well, loose in behaviour and morals, given to vice or dissipation. So, vicious also. And the sinus means loose, Lured, lustful, wanton, this basically comes back in a circle again. So, when we're looking at these verses here, you have lived in pleasure, so you've lived in pleasure on the earth, lustful pleasures, he's probably talking about here, or within your things, being wanton, which means without any restraint. Without any restraint, you've just... You don't care about any moral codes or anything. You don't have, basically saying that they're, at this point in time, they're just living the way they want to live. Like we hear at the time we used to go door knocking, um, Brother Paul now I'm working full time, can't do that. But when I used to go door knocking, so many times it was, I'll do it my way. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I have my own God, I live my own way. And as the Christian, so remember Jesus said that, well, no, by Paul, so uh, the Apostle Paul, I think it was, actually said that we live under grace and that we're not under the bondage of the law anymore, but we should still live our life by the word of God. Amen. We have the, the freedom to choose, as Paul said, you know, I have the freedom now to choose these things. I can choose to do good or evil, but but grace forbid that I, I choose the good path. And the good path is only the word of God. Amen. So we have those choices in, in our lives now, which before and before you get saved, you only go after the natural man. And the natural man does not concern the things that be of God, right. the book of Romans says. So we go after the natural man 
So when people say that I've lost, I have a, you have the one choice. The one choice is to either get saved or not get saved. When you get saved, I now have the choice to actually do the right or wrong in a proper sense. Yes, before you get saved, you can do good works. But those good works aren't going to get you to heaven. Right. Yeah. Ephesians 2, 8 says, For by grace you saved through faith is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Because we can't boast about things, but we'll continue anyway. Isaiah 3.16 says, actually we'll just, uh, I'll just read it out. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. So that's the first mention of the word wanton is in the book of Isaiah 3.16. It's talking about they're looking around with wanton eyes, lustful, indulging eyes. They're talking about. Let's turn to Genesis. Um, because uh, Nourish me with the, uh, yeah, Genesis 47 12. I think we should already still be there. Or close to there anyway. Genesis 47 12. And Joseph nourished his father and his brethren and all his father's household with bread according to their families. I wonder what that one down. Ah. Well, it's a nourished is. Nourished, that's right. Nourished your hearts. It was. It was the first mention uh, of like what well, nourished, but basically that. Yeah, nourished, yeah. He nourished. That's the first mention of the word nourished in, in the Bible. So he nourished his father and his brethren. So abundance of, of things. You have nourished your hearts. Nourished. Because nourished means to fed, supplied, or cause to grow. So you've caused to your hearts to grow. Um, James Price talking about with lustful pleasures as in the day of slaughter. And the word slaughter means in a general sense, killing applied to, to many things, like, I, like or killing of an animal or killing something. Slaughter is basically to kill, we could say. And so you, you've, is, is a mass killing, it's a slaughter. We, we have a look at the word there. Genesis 14, 17. We turn here. And I behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. I don't know where I'm going to go, sorry. I'm looking at <laughs> that looks a bit different. Genesis 14, 17. <laughs> Genesis 14, 17. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the, from the slaughter of the Chaldean. No, wait, sorry. Cheddar Rolimer. Okay, I, I think that's how you say it. And of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shaveth, Shaveth, which is the king's dale. So the king of Sodom had gone out and basically slaughtered an entire other heap of another nation, I guess, would be, we'd say, mm -hmm. another lens of people. Um, now, obviously, that is before Sodom and Gomorrah got wiped out by God, in, in the, which we now, you can go that place. There's a place called Sodom and Gomorrah off the edge of Israel, and the whole place is ash. And you can still visit there today. And I actually had a good chance in the, uh, during the week to um, witness to, uh, well, a guy on my online thing. And I told him about Sodom and Gomorrah. We were talking about stuff. He says he's a Jew. And he says he's a Jew, but where he is or not. And I said, you know, things 
and we talked about, and I said, you know, this place called Sodom and Gomorrah, that's unlike any other place. And you should really go and visit there or do some research on it because you'll find that it's the only place that's got wiped out thousands of years ago and they still can't build there. You know, that they wiped out, we had the atom bomb. So if we go back in time, we had, we had the atom, uh, yeah, Hiroshima and Nagasaki and there are people living there with atom bomb hit, they said people never live there. We had the Chernobyl event of, of the USSR or Russia, or one of the, I can't remember the exact country's name, okay. Chernobyl it is, yeah, Chernobyl. People, animals are alive there again. They're walking around, the trees and stuff are growing. Mount St. Helens in, in America, they said that nothing, we go to Pompeii, it's even different. Things can live there and grow there. But there's a place called Sodom and Gomorrah and God said in the word of God that he would destroy that place as an ins you know, and the word of God says an example to us. And that place is now ash and has been remained ash for thousands, for more than 4,000 years in time. There is nothing there, nothing grow there and the sulfur is like anything else is 90% sulfur and the balls of sulfur are still burning inside and he's i told him and he said what this is amazing i said you know what the bible talks about that place the word of god you should maybe think about that yeah man that's yeah. good and i just left him with that because to plant the seed in his heart because so many people have these arguments but here's a place that exists, you cannot argue against. You can go there and visit. And God left us this example. So why don't we use it as Christians? Yes, it is a very sobering thought that God wiped out an entire bunch of cities of people but rained down fire upon the earth so bad that nothing, not even a creature can live there. There is no animals, insects or anything there. Animals come to the edge of it but they don't live there. Mm -hmm. And you can't camp there because the sulfur content is too high that you will die. Mm -hmm. You'll get killed by toxic fumes in the air. So God said, God said, I'll destroy this place, nothing will live here. Man dropped the atom bomb and he said, nothing shall sure, surely if that we drop the atom bomb, things grow back in. God says, ha, I'll show you. <laughs> that's a place you can't live. And that's what happens in my wrath. Good, Jeff. Good. The last part that we're looking at is heart. Now we all know that the heart is a, it's a muscle in your in your in your in your body, a vesicle, a muscle. The Bob says a muscle, a muscular viscous. It's called, which is the primary organ of the blood's motion in animal body, situated in the thorax. From the from this organ, all the arteries arise. And in the, all the veins terminate. By its alternate dilation and contraction, the blood is received from the veins and returned through the arteries, which by means circulation is carried on and life preserved. That's how your heart works. Oh, look at that. We've got a bit of medical lesson this morning. <laughs> if your heart stops beating, you die. If your heart beats too fast, you have a heart attack and then it stops and you die. Your heart is the center where all functions work around you. You can only live so long without a heart. They can do transplants these days. You go do, 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 do. But if they're too long in doing that heart transplant, you die. But the heart, the Bob's talking about, it is your center of you. It is that the heart of you, Jesus talked about from, from the bones of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if, if you're always talking about rubbish all the time, then that's what's in your heart. If you're talking about the things of God all the time, and that's what's on your mind, then that's what's in your heart. Amen. Yeah. That's how you know that you're walking the right path with the Lord. Is what is coming out of your mouth because what's in your heart. It's a pretty good indicator. 
It's the chief part, the vital part of our body. Now, this way, you and I have a heart, and so does God. Genesis 6 5 And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, let's we say it today, we are so evil today, our hearts are always thinking evil. You know, mankind, we just, you go out there, I mean, there's so much evil happening. Yeah. It's just everywhere. Yeah. Genesis 6, 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Mm. Genesis 18, 21 says, And the Lord smelled a sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done. That was after the flood. If he had said in here, again, neither will I again smite any more every living thing, and it stopped there, then, him saying that he's going to wipe out the earth and heavens with a fervent heat, he'd be going back on his promise here. But God cannot lie, Amen. as I have done. So these people that talk about that the ice caps are going to melt and the flood of the earth and whatever, we know that that's a lie that's right. because of the word of God. Yeah, that's right. And we believe the word of God, as I have done. So God's not going to flood the earth again. But you know what he is going to do? He is going to make the earth melt with a fervent heat. And you know what the example of that was? Sodom and Gomorrah. <coughs> but first Peter says that it was left as an example to those that live ungodly. So if we're living ungodly in our life, just remember what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. God destroyed the place with great fervent heat and the heat that's coming is going to be greater than the heat that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. Yeah. We're talking about heat that's going to destroy the stars in heaven. Mm. We're talking about a heat that's going to destroy the other planets up there. We're talking about a heat that's more hotter than the sun to destroy the sun. And the sun is a hundred billion times hotter than any we ever imagined. In fact, our earth is perfectly made that the magnetic force field around the earth and atmosphere protects us from the sun, that if that was not there, we would all be scorched yeah. to death by heat. Did you know that? God has placed the earth perfectly, the third rock from the sun, they call it, <laughs> the third planet from the sun, too far away, we freeze to death, too close, we'd also burn up, but also where we are, if we do not have the atmosphere and the magnetic force that goes around the earth, you've got the polar magnetic things, we would all be dead and scorched alive and burning here with nothing would be living here. Now you can't tell me that that accidentally came out of a big bang. Bang! Boom! And it came and we all turned from slime and came up and, and before we know it, we're here and we're growing. We're intelligent beings, we're making computers and all kinds of things. Come on, like really think about it. Do you really think that we came from a slime rock and we came up and made this stuff? Come on. <laughs> it's just it's the stupidest thing we've ever heard it's like we were created by an intelligent designer amen amen created in the image and likeness of god now we all know in in ezra and then in ezra it says here Ezra 11, actually let's turn there, let's go to Ezra 11. Now God will give Israel a new heart as well. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord, 11, 16, sorry. 11, 16. Ezra, Ezra 11. Uh, Ezekiel, sorry. Ezekiel. Oh, sorry, I'm sending you guys on the wrong path. Uh, 
Ezekiel. Ezekiel the other way. Ezekiel eleven sixteen. Therefore say, Thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Therefore say, Thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and send you out of the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. And they shall come thither, and they shall take away all these desolate things thereof, and the abominations thereof from thence. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them, and they shall be my people and I will be their God. Amen. But as for them whose heart walketh after the heart of their desolate things and their abominations, I recompense their way upon their own heads, saith the Lord. God gives us a new heart. In Ezekiel 36, 26 it says, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. We are saved when we believe in Jesus Christ. Raised from the dead. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And shalt believe in thine heart. That God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Amen. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In Romans 5, 1 to 5, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access to, by faith into this grace wherein we stand, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Amen. And as I finish up here this morning here, what or who will you allow into your heart? Will you choose to allow evil into your heart so that you have murderings and adulterings and stealings and lyings and, and bad things coming into your heart? Or will you choose to allow the Lord Jesus Christ to enter your heart and to change you? Because we see that verse there, Jesus said, from the bones of the heart the mouth speaks. And, and God said that the heart of man from his youth is continually wicked. That God knows that even from the youth, God said that you're continually wicked in your heart. But you know what? He also said you can change it. And that when we're saved, the love of God just brought in our heart. And you want that love inside you? If you want the love of God in your hearts, you need to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. And for the Christian, we need to show the love of God to people out there. Let's um, finish off there. And remember, what or who will you allow into your heart this morning? Our Father, which art in heaven, Lord, as we come to you now in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. I pray, Father, that you be our all in all, Lord. That the love of God be shown abroad in our hearts, Father. And that... As we uh, go our way and we pray, bless the food, the morning tea, Lord. I pray for the coming message, Lord, and the preacher coming after. That, Lord, you fill in the Holy Ghost, Lord. And I pray, Lord, your words have gone and touched the hearts of the people. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> On the heart, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, oh,
Mm-hmm.